All right, so today I want to do a uh, quick review on a new product, or at least a new product to me, and it's the Eastwood Mini Metal Saw. And it's sitting right here on this bench, and I'm going to show you in more detail what comes in the box. And then I want to put this thing to, to the test because I've not used it yet, not tested it. But before we do all that, I kind of want to give you a little bit of background to kind of let you to kind of tell you guys how I got here and how I got the saw because I had never heard of this saw before. Obviously, I've heard of Eastwood, but I've never I didn't know they made a saw that apparently uh, cuts quarter inch plate steel like butter. So uh, I'm excited about that part of it. I'm what, I guess I'm what you would consider kind of a hobbyist when it comes to metal work and certainly with welding. As hard as I try with welding, it's um, I've got a small MIG welder, a Hobart 140, and I have a lot of fun with it. I've made a lot of cool stuff. I made this bench uh, that this uh, metal saw is sitting on. I've welded some uh, floor panels into my Jeep that were rusted. I've gotten, I just got done working on a, uh, a, a big winch bumper for my uh, old square body truck that I'm working on. And when I did that square body truck, I had to, the bumper, I had to weld in a quarter inch plate about that big. And I, I cut it with cutoff wheels, uh, probably like a lot of us do. And just one, just literally about that size, I went through four or five cutoff wheels. And I'm thinking in my head, I want to fabricate a quarter inch plate uh, rear bumper for the square body. And there's got to be a better way to do this. So I got online, started looking around, researching, Googling some stuff, and this saw popped up. So I didn't spend a lot of time uh, debating the purchase. I watched the little Eastwood intro video. Uh, it's supposed to be a cold cut and not throw off a lot of debris. I, I noticed it has a dust bag on it. But uh, it was on sale for $104 uh, after $99 on the Eastwood site at that particular time. Free shipping. So kind of a no-brainer to me. I went ahead and ordered it. And I did check the cost of the replacement blades, and I think they're about $15 a piece. So that's not terribly bad. I know you can buy a larger uh, metal cutting blade for your circular saw, but those things I think run about 40 bucks a piece. So in the long run, as long as the saw holds up, I think this, this one will be more of a value. All right, so that's enough of the background story. Let's, uh, let's take a look at this thing. Let's see what comes in the box, and then we're going to put it to the test. All right, so there's the box, and who cares about the box, but I just want to show you the item number. It's 31664, and it comes with the saw with blade, 5 millimeter hex key wrench, and a 7-inch capacity guide fence. 5.8 amp motor, 1 and 5 eighths max cut depth, 3,500 RPMs to cut through any material. All right, so there's the uh, guide fence. Uh, you've got some instructions there. There's the Allen head or hex key. Um, there's the blade, and that blade came with that little uh, blade guard on it. And you get a sticker. I love when companies give you stickers because I kind of collect them and uh, put them up in various parts of my shop. And then here's the saw. And this thing, I can tell you, feels like a really high quality product and it does have a uh, safety trigger guard which I already noticed and I really like that so you have to push that button in to get it to go see that round button there and then it does not come with the uh, the saw blade mounted so we're gonna have to mount that and I believe it probably mounts right there using that hex key all right there's the, uh, the little allen head screw there and it says it very clearly in the instructions that that is a reverse thread. And I hate reverse threads, but uh, I'm glad I actually read the instructions because you got to turn it the opposite way of what you would think in order to uh, get, the, get that screw off and so you can put your blade in. So one of the things that you have to do before you take out that Allen head is flip the machine over and you'll see this button here and that is a drive lock button. So you got to kind of hold it like this depress that button and that will lock the blade from spinning and then you can loosen that uh, allen head in there and remember reverse threads on that one all right so in order to put the blade on you've got some uh, directionals here and it's going to go this side up and because the blade spins this way and so that's going to line up with the uh, directionals there and you're going to open up this blade guard all the way and the blade will just slide right on open that up Work the blade in, it sits over the top of the arbor, and you just let that go. All right, now you're gonna reinstall your arbor bushing, and this does have two straight ends and two curved ends, and so you wanna make sure you line that up to where that is the proper orientation on that arbor, and then you're gonna now thread in your, and remember, reverse threads. Once you get that snugged up, you're gonna come back here, depress the button on the back, and lock that thing down. 
Another cool little feature is kind of, I said dust bag earlier, but it's really just a compartment there and it's got this lid and it says to empty the chips before each use. So I imagine that fills up pretty quickly, but uh, what a nice way to contain your, uh, your scrap metal there or the debris from uh, making those cuts. All right, so I'm not going to put this guide fence on, but if you want to put it on, there's just two slots right there. It just slides in, and then you've got kind of a set screw right here that the same uh, Allen head that they give you fits, and you can press that down and lock it down, and that'll really help you make some uh, straight cuts there. And right, right back over here on the cord, it does have a uh, an Allen head, an Allen wrench retainer. There you go. So that will uh, always be there, and hopefully you won't lose it that way. That's pretty handy. All right, so we are ready to cut. Make sure you have your uh, safety glasses and ear protection, all the proper uh, PPE for a machine like this. And if you have gloves, they recommend using gloves as well. And here's my test piece that I'm gonna cut. So this is a quarter inch thick piece of scrap steel. And what I'm gonna try to do is walk down this line right here and see how good of a cut I can make. Uh, freehand, I'm not gonna use the fence, but it does give you that little groove there, that little V. And that's going to that's gonna align yourself with the blade. And let's see how good of a cut I can make on this freehand. All right, so uh, this is uh, me not touching it at all with any kind of cleanup, and it is pretty much a burr-free cut. It did not get hot at all. I didn't stay quite on my line there, but uh, for the first time ever using the saw, I am pretty impressed. That's quarter-inch plate steel. Uh, that would have taken me probably two minimum, two cutoff wheels, and there, no way I would have got a straight cut like that. So uh, what an amazing product. All right, so like I said, what an amazing product. I cannot believe that it cut through that steel uh, just, uh, just like butter, like, like all the reviews said. I'm, I'm so excited that I finally found a way, an economical way, to uh, get through some of this thicker plate steel that I work with and not have to use cutoff wheels. I'm going to love using this thing. What a great product from Eastwood. I really appreciate you checking out the video. Thank you for your support, and as always, thanks for watching.